All right, here's a tutorial on how to make this fake volumetric fog that I got going on. Um, it's just a Niagara system and a bunch of sprite particles. And here's what it looks like as you move around. It dissipates as you get closer to it, but when you're far away, it looks really good. Looks like some real volumetric localized fog that's like sticking to the ground. And um, I'll just get right into it. So let's look at the Niagara system first. I based it off of the blowing particles one and I got rid of like drag and all that. And I'll just show you the settings. Let's go to spawn rate. So I have uh, some parameters down here, fade in speed, spawn speed. These are the only ones you really gotta know. Spawn speed is just so we can change the speed for each emitter in the world. If you want one to have more or one to have less, then you can change that with the parameter. So we have spawn speed as three, fade in speed is 50. The fade in speed comes down here in scale color. I am scaling the alpha over time from a curve and I just have the alpha go from zero to 0.5 back to zero during its lifetime multiplied by the fade in speed. So 50 makes it fade in faster. One would make it fade in very slowly. And so the lifetime will go, that's important. Lifetime is between 15 and 20 seconds. These are long living particles that are just moving slowly in the world. They're moving with a linear force of the wind direction and wind speed. I just have a simple, slow little speed going on there. The other thing is an initialized particle. Make sure the sprite size is pretty big. Here are my settings for that. And for the sprite renderer, make sure that um, facing mode is automatic. That should do face camera. If you have to set it to face camera, that's fine, but we want them all to face camera. That's part of the illusion. And shape location is a really big box. And it's a very short box, so the fog sticks to the ground. Um, that's all for the Niagara system, basically. Now let's get into the material. This is where all the magic is. And it's not actually that complicated, as you can see right here. So I'm going to go through each of these nodes and how it affects the actual fog. So up here we have... This texture, which is just a cloud texture that's channel packed, so we have a bunch of different noise cloud textures in these channels. And so what I'm doing is I use the red channel, multiply that by particle color. What this is is what's coming from the particle system. So you can change the color in the particle system and it will reflect in the material. So that's what we have for the base color for opacity. We're taking another noise map from this pack texture. We're taking the green channel and we're multiplying it by all a bunch of stuff. So let's go back to the beginning. This is my alpha mask. It's just like a cloud um, PNG I got off of Google Images, nothing too deep. And I'm just using it for the alpha, alpha channel to give that good outline to each particle. First off, multiply it by the particle alpha that we're getting from the particle system. So that is taking into account this alpha value over time. Next, we multiply by the weather system. I have a weather system in my map that's global and uses a material parameter collection. This, to make one of these, you search collection, and you can bring in a collection parameter. And that's just a parameter that's global across your project set in this material parameter collection that you can make yourself. Next up, or actually I'll show how this works real quick. In my sequencer, as you can see, so we have the fog and I'm animating the material parameter collection down here and I'm animating the fog opacity. So as the storm gets bigger, the puddles grow and the fog gets more opaque until it gets to its most opaque right here. Back into the material. The next thing we multiply by is the distance fade. So for the distance fade, we take pixel depth, subtract our fade offset, which is a parameter that we made. The way you make a scalar parameter like this, hold down one and left click, and then you have a scalar, and then you right click and convert it to a parameter, and then you can name it whatever you want, and it will show up here. Anyways, we take fade off offset, subtract that from the depth, which is how far away it is. Then we divide by the max distance. So these two are pretty important. I'll show you right here what happens if we change them. If we change our fade offset, that's how far away the particles start to show up. If I do 200 instead of 500, 100 instead of 500, they just get closer and closer. If I do 1,000, they're farther away. Max distance is when the particle will reach max opacity. So it starts, opacity is at zero at this offset. Then opacity will reach one at this max distance. So if I make this max distance smaller, that gets more opaque because over time it goes over a less distance 
before it reaches one opacity. So I'm going to switch that back to 7500 because I like it like that. Back into the material. What happens next is the alpha is then multiplied by our just I have an opacity multiply parameter. So I can just change that easily. And right now I'll change it so we can really see what's going on. If I um, bring the multiplier up, it's just going to multiply the opacity, make everything a lot more visible. So right now I'll just make it one so nothing happens. And then we clamp it by max opacity. So what this does is if I have max opacity be one and I go up in the air, it looks really bad. You can see all the sprites really clearly because there's no distance faded for far away. It's only for close up. So I have this max opacity to make sure that even when you're high up in the air, the fog still looks pretty good. It's just very faint. You can even have it less if you want. And I think the normal amount that I have it at is like this. And see, it still looks good even when you're up or at angles because the sprites are facing you and because the sprites are pretty big. Um, going back in here, we're almost done. So you clamp it then with the max opacity parameter. And then the last thing that I do is multiply it by another one of these channels, the green channel, just to, and this channel is panning over time at a very low speed right here. And so what that is, is it's just moving the texture constantly. So when I multiply this texture with the opacity, what we're getting is just overall variety in the opacity of the fog, just making it seem like the fog is changing and evolving over time. And you might see I have this node right here going to the opacity mask. Dithering the a dither temporal AA, what it does is is fake translucency. So right now we're a translucent blend mode, but that might be too expensive. It might cause too much overdraw in your project. So the way to make it more performant is use mast and plug it into opacity mask with this temporal AA node. And then when we apply that, the fog is instead using this dither method, which kind of makes it distorted and you can see the particles. So when you go into the dither mode, you're just going to want to uh, make sure your fade distance is higher, something like 1250, 1500 even. And I think that's kind of what looks good. And this is still a very, very performant, but good looking fog. And I guess for above, you probably, if you're using dither, you're going to want the max opacity to be pretty low just so it doesn't look awkward from above but that seems pretty good um so yeah you can have a really good uh slightly performant one with the translucent material but this dithered one looks decent some people hate dithering i kind of think it looks good especially for things like mist and smoke i think it just kind of complements what those things are supposed to look like and it's super performant so why not so yeah, anyways, I'm going to set these back to what they were before. And there you have it. Some fake volumetric fog that you can place around your level wherever you want to. In my level, I place it like over there because that's an important area. I put it near the river because there would probably be fog there. And yeah, I'm just happy with how this effect turned out. And I hope it helps you and feel free to tweak it however you want.